Hello guys, welcome to CEO Sister Talk Live. We are back for another installment this evening. So super excited about this topic. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. <clears throat> it's always fun to talk about money and dream money, right? Tonight we are discussing strategi I might have had a little too much wine already. Strategizing your ideal income. LaShawn Thompson, hello love. Jaywar Jewel, hello, 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 everyone coming on. I am Andrea Yvette. Clarissa, there she is. Hey, love. Sharnay, hey, doll, baby. Hello, hello. Hey, sweetheart. Terrence has a topic, and I'm excited about all of them, but super excited about this one. All right, yay. Hey, Clarissa. Hey, doll. How are you? Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I'm drinking wine, y'all. I'm just letting y'all know right now. <laughs> I'm sitting here with a glass of wine, relaxing. Deanna, hi, sweetheart. Oh, they're excited about this topic, Clarissa. This is a good one. I'm excited about this one. Because we're talking about money, 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 honey. Yeah. Okay, before we get started, everybody, welcome to CEO Sister Talk live on every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, we had a couple questions that got sent in, Clarissa, that I wanted to kind of cover these questions before we, we dive into our topic okay. tonight. So you guys can um, send your questions in to hello at ceosistersociety.com. Right. Hello at ceosistersociety.com. That is our official email. I'm going to type that in there, Clarissa. CEO sister you can email us your questions and we'll answer your questions when we come live and y'all have the best questions I'm telling you y'all keep the conversation good. going okay right hey Rod hey guys okay um so let me get it go in here real quick Clarissa we're going to answer a couple questions that came in Clarissa this was a really good question um I thought about you. Um, the first question said, since you started coaching when it was relatively new, the same could be said for PR with you, Clarissa, okay? Because I, I want us to answer this both ways, from the coaching side and the PR side. Since you started coaching when it was rel relatively new, what would your approach, would your approach it differently now, seeing that it's so heavily saturated? Like, in other words, when I started coaching, nobody was brand new. Nobody was a coach. It was, it was a brand new thing. When you started PR, there's a lot more PR agents now, yeah. right, than there were when you first got started. What's your advice to someone watching right now on here because they love you, Clarissa, and they are an aspiring PR agent, want to own a firm like you one day, what, what is your advice now compared to 20 years ago? My advice now would be to definitely research, research, research. So if you know my story, you know I fell backwards into PR. I didn't, I went to school for marketing and fell into the public relations industry afterwards. So while you know that those industries kind of parallel each other, they are not the same. So one thing I, I did, but I could have stood an extra year worth of interning. I did about six months worth of interning when I decided to pivot from corporate America into public relations, research and interning. Get the, uh, get the practical, applicable experience before you launch off on your own. There were some things that it took me two or three years to learn that I could have experienced three extra months on an internship. So research for your industry is extremely important because just because you pick an industry doesn't mean that you know the niches of the industry. Public relations is one big huge umbrella but there are fashion publicists there are beauty product publicists there are music publicists there are so many different ways to go so know your lane in the industry too so research and applicable practical experience before you jump into entrepreneurship wonderful okay my my answer to that question from a coaching industry side guys and we're gonna we're gonna jump into our strategizing your ideal income here in one second we're just answering a couple questions guys um one, I would still do grassroots marketing. Mm -hmm. I think that so, there is a huge demographic of people that you're not going to reach on social media right. through virtual means. And everyone focuses on social media so much, guys, that our world now, this tech 
age we live in is now presented an opportunity for you to actually touch hearts in person, for you to make a difference in person. In person seminars, workshops, uh, classes, trainings, anything you can do uh, from a grassroots guerrilla marketing perspective is going to make you stand out because when someone meets you in person, which is how I started my business, yes. I would go back to some of that traditional stuff because <clears throat> you learn how to speak, you learn how to engage, you learn um, in real time, not virtual on a camera, yeah. you engage with people and there's so much knowledge to gain through that real engagement versus virtual. The second tip I would give for now versus then is perfect your online image. Whatever this the brand your brand is, whatever you're going to look like, invest in professional photo shoots, invest in great pictures, video quality, yeah. your cameras, your your tech because how you present yourself online really matters, right? You could just be pretty and get a gazillion followers, guys, from being pretty. And if you know how to do your makeup, you get your lighting right, you invest, I, I think it gives you that leg up. That would be my advice. I did not invest so much in social media uh, when I was first getting started because it was new. You know, it was brand new back back when. It didn't exist, you know, 20 years ago. Was, has it been 20 years now? Oh, something like that. Anyway, that would be my advice. So I wanted to take that first question and we'll, we'll cover the next question uh, next week because we need to jump into our, because our hour is going to go by really fast. So um, strategizing your ideal income. Mm -hmm. So this topic is close to my heart. For those of you who don't know, I am a strategist. <laughs> I like to reverse engineer any goal. I like to know exactly what I'm shooting for. I like to know where I'm headed, what I, where I'm going. So one of the things that I have found with a lot of aspiring um, entrepreneurs is that you're just kind of winging it. it. It's kind of like you're throwing stuff out to see what will stick, um, but without having really, really clear goals. And believe it or not, guys, every time I have written down a strategic money goal, it has always manifested. The money always manifests. It comes through because it's once you write it down, you now are keeping it in mind. There is research that shows once you write things down, it becomes solidified in your mind and it becomes real. So if you haven't written down some income goals, then it's just kind of like, well, you know, it is what it is. Like, whatever comes in, it's great. No, you know, it's time to get a little bit more strategic. Um, so, Clarissa, let's use an example. If I said to you, Clarissa, what is your next level ideal gross, not net, gross income goal for you and for synergy let's say for the business not your take home drilling all the way down but what is your next level income goal for synergy so the first thing i would say and this is kind of touching on what we just talked about the now versus back then back in the day i was just like as long as i get to six figures i'm gonna be doing it like i'm i'm gonna be so excited i did not even the, you, the way you differentiate it between net and gross, oh my God, y'all, please do yourselves a favor. First of all, if your business makes $100,000, you did not put $100,000 in your pocket. No, you did not. I had no idea that me bringing in six figures worth of like client money did not mean that I was putting that in my pocket because wh why not? What are some reasons that what you thought you needed is not what you really needed? Because overhead. Am I driving to 20 networking events? Am I spending $300 a month in gas? Do I have to buy a new suit? What are the things that I need to invest in myself to even get to those goals? What are my revolving expenses? Do I have a company credit card that I'm using for getting out of parking garages? Am I paying for office rent? Am I, what are supplies? Am I paying for people to help me with my business? There are so many things to, to factor in. So Clarissa today, is thinking that I need 10 times my company expenses per month to become in for an ideal situation for myself. So while I won't be disclosing exact numbers, I right. need 10 times what my payroll is, what our office expenses are. I need 10 times that monthly right. to feel like I am hitting the next level goal. Gotcha. And one of the things um, you, 
that we've got to get strategic about in business, guys, is getting very clear of what that looks like. Yeah. So for I'm going to throw out some numbers as an example mm -hmm. tonight, guys, so that we can actually do some math and strategize, okay? So because this is for gross. Mm -hmm. So let's just say no, people I said clean gross and net. We're talking gross. We're going to talk gross, and then we can talk net. Yeah. Depending on your business model and your industry, what you net can be very different from gross. For someone like me, who is a virtual mm -hmm. coach, mm -hmm. I do not have office space. My only expenses, really extreme expenses, are staff, mm -hmm. so yeah. personnel, um, and the overhead that goes along with software, tech, um, marketing costs, all the all my personal stuff that go gets written off my taxes and all that stuff so i have a very low overhead for the type of business i run clarissa's business is much more overhead or more um what do you call it um from a profit profit and loss perspective yeah. she has she has a higher overhead right just because she has an actual brick and mortar location mm -hmm that has to be maintained, that has bills, yes. right? So so let me just start right now with just general numbers, guys. And I, I just wanna talk specifically about beginning to create income goals mm -hmm. because this is, you want to get the money coming in so then we can deal with the problems of making money. That's a good right. problem to have. But we wanna start setting the goals so that we can hit them. So let's just I'm going to I'm going to throw out a number. Let's just say for the anybody on here that your first goal, this is a number I like to start with with coaches who are getting brand new into coaching. I set the first goal at $10,000 a month to say if you want to make your first $10,000 a month in your business for you, some of you guys watching, it might be 5,000, it it could be 3,000, whatever that number is, but I like to use 10,000 because it's a nice round number and it also is that entry level point into six figures. Yes. It $10,000 a month is $120,000 a year, guys, gross. That's that nice little first level six figures you can make in your business. So one of the first things that I do, guys, when it comes to, to, to strategically deciding how am I going to make this money? So if you're setting a goal to say, I want to make $10,000 in my business, and let's just use Clarissa loves t-shirts. <laughs> She's always talks about t-shirt businesses when we're on here. And you own a t-shirt business, right? And let's just say for every t-shirt you sell, you make, you net $10. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just say you net, it caught the actual t-shirt itself, shipping, your help to get them printed, all of that. You're going to net $10 per t-shirt is what you make. Kind of no different than a book author. If you write a book, it's selling on Amazon for 20 something dollars. You typically will net $10, okay? Around there. I'm, I'm roughing it. Yeah. You've got to sell a thousand t-shirts a month to make your $10,000. You've got to sell a thousand books if you're netting 10, making $10 per book, you got to sell a thousand books a month to hit your first $10,000. Now, here's where the strategy comes in, guys. If you're not selling anything right now, the first key is to learn how to sell your first hundred books yes. a month. Yep. We're going to break this down into smaller goals so that you can get a blueprint of how to reach that, that the next level goal, you're first going to decide how you're going to make your first hundred and you're going to duplicate that success to say, I'm going to do that 10 times to get to my $10,000. I'm going to throw a number out for Clarissa's PR agency. And let's just say Clarissa's goal is to make a million dollars a month, right? A million dollars a month. Clarissa, real easy numbers is to say, if Clarissa has a hundred ten thousand dollar clients yep. in pr the goal would be to get to a ten thousand dollar per month pr retainer level with her clients and have a hundred of those on retainer monthly retainer in order for her to gross a million dollars a month so now reverse engineering it's all about 
how do you get to your $10,000 clients? Right. And how do you then duplicate that many clients? Right, guys? So this is how strategically you begin to create ideal income goals. It's even better if you have multiple streams of income or multiple products or services to yes. offer. Because yes. now you're not depending on just back to PR agency. You're not, you don't just need a $10,000 client. If Clarissa also has a $500 PR course that mm -hmm. she sells, if she has a thousand dollar PR course, if she's got special training, she does for corporate to teach goes in, she's got a $15,000 a month corporate contract that she goes in and trains people on the do's and don'ts inside of the entertainment company for Turner Broadcasting right. to teach them how to conduct themselves because they represent the company. She does executive PR training on a contract for $15,000 a month. Right now, she doesn't have to depend strictly on PR clients, one-on-one yeah. -on -one clients to make all the money. So the key here, guys, is to take out a sheet of paper and literally write down the math. If you're going to sell 10 of these products and services, if you're going to sell 50 of these products and services, and another 10 of these products and services to reach your goal, but then every month you can track yourself to see how you're doing. You need to, this all everything that you're saying is like firing off, like all the stuff that we learn as we go along as entrepreneurs, and even some of the stuff they try to teach you in business school that you don't pay attention to until it's your feet are to the fire and you're trying to figure it out. You have to look at it kind of like a plate because i'm glad you pointed out multiple streams of income because okay let's keep the million dollar a month goal for the P for a pr firm maybe the million dollars is not coming from all clients so if i know that i'm only going to bring in six hundred thousand from clients i need to figure out how to bring in another four hundred thousand so that could be a combination of things and you have to be conscious of what other streams your company can make because industries fluctuate you know make swimsuits now i mean there, there's it's always hot somewhere in the world, but just imagine a seasonal business. Um, people are not buying Christmas ornaments all year long. Watermelon. They're, or watermelon. Christmas ornaments. Yes. So there are times where you're like, dang, the is booming. I made that million dollars for six months. Now my company has gotten used to bringing in this money. I have to figure out how to supplement that income while that thing that seems to be the bread and butter has slowed down. So multiple streams of ways to bring money into the same business. You don't, you're not reinventing the wheel. Like Rebecca said, we service clients. What are other things that we can do? We do freelance PR for people who are just on the go. Hey, I'm coming to your city. I'm going to be on the Steve Harvey show and I want to do a media circuit while I'm in town. Oh, well, we offer some flat packages for people who just happen to be traveling here. They have a PR firm back home where they are in LA or New York, but they need somebody to manage something on the ground here. Red carpet activations. We do those. Okay, I'm having a birthday party for this celebrity. I need somebody to run the red carpet. So all this to say, Rebecca is hitting the nail on the head when she's saying, where can you pull all this money so you can net the thing that you need to net? So yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And I also, so guys, what, so as you're going along, mm -hmm. it's also really important to, to pay attention to your lane, pay attention to your jam. Pay attention to what really, really works for you and what kind of doesn't. Yes. So over the years, I've done a little bit of anything and everything when it comes to the coaching industry. I thought I wanted to be a speaker. I grew my honorarium speaking fees up to 4000 6000 and I hated it. <laughs> and, yep. and you can't give me enough money to make me leave my house and my puppies and my family to get on planes and travel. I, I want to travel. I love to travel for leisure and fun with my hubby and my, or my family, but I do not like to travel to speak at other people's conferences. It's I would have to be charging $50,000. That This is me personally. <clears throat> when I was first getting started, it all sounds, see, anything and everything looks good. Mm -hmm. When you're online, you see other people doing things. You're like, oh, t-shirt business, fun. I did it. I launched Godly Girls Glam, little boutique online e-commerce store. And we had little t-shirts and makeup bags and, you know, uh, what did it say? Blessed and bougie. I had all these little cute t-shirts and all this stuff. And then you realize, wait, so we net $10 a t-shirt and you still got to pay for all this customer service and you got to pay for all this um 
you know, for it to be made, the, the actual creation, packaging, shipping, mm -hmm. uh, and then these crazy customer service emails and people, I ordered it. I thought you were a woman of God. I haven't seen my t It's been like 48 hours. These are all custom made t-shirts. It says right here, seven days, you know, yeah. to, to be made seven days. And I'm just like, people are crazy. Customer so service. So you have to I'm not me. To factor in if the thing that you're doing is even worth you trying to do that to make the million or the hundred thousand dollars because how many t-shirts will take you to make a million dollars so clarissa i was over here with five thousand dollar coaching clients oh, yep. and i got ten dollar t-shirts yep. right and then i and i'm over here like i got to do the marketing what do you think i'm going to market to get a five thousand dollar client or sell a ten dollar t-shirt yep. that i got to then have all this staff to manage customer service and complain emails and i'm like oh this is not the business for me mm -hmm. like i was really quick guys like this is not it i can't the nope. not. and and you those are the things you're going to learn because literally when i first wrote out my first seven streams of income that i wanted to have inside of my coaching industry wheel i wrote down right retreats memberships yep. I wrote down t-shirts, e-commerce, I wrote down book sales, I wrote down speaking engagements. I'm just writing down all these different things of what I saw other people doing right. in the industry. And I thought, let's do this, right? Yeah. I can do this. And then I start activating each one of those things. And as I did them, I was like, I don't think, I don't like this. This isn't, this isn't the string for me. Yeah. And, and that's something that you have to be very aware of. Do not keep trying to make something be a fit to, to, because it's not going to be sustainable for your long-term income. Goals. And it's not a failure. If you try something and you say, I am done with this thing, I am done. My husband and I have multiple businesses and one of them right now we're contemplating possibly pivoting away from it. Not because it doesn't make money, not because of, any reason that's like stressing, but it's like, you know what? Is this worth our time? How much are we investing in this? Is this requiring our physical bodies to do this? Hmm, you start to think. So if you go along, y'all start 10 businesses. If the t-shirt business doesn't work, the muffin baking business doesn't work, but the dog sitting business does work, get rid of the other stuff. Get rid of it because you will find your business will tell you what it wants to do. Your customers will tell you what they like for you to do. You have to listen and don't feel like a failure if you get rid of a service or a product, even if people like it. Y'all know y'all have been to a store and they got rid of that, that flavor, they got rid of that scent, that candle is no longer there and you are like, oh, but it may have been <laughs> the company to source the oil to fragrance, to, to build a fragrance profile. So you just never know. So don't be afraid to stop something. If you started it and somebody else is successful doing it, they found a formula. If it's not working for you, don't feel like you're a failure for most something. definitely because you know part of business is trial and error mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it, it's about yep. trying things it's about failure and it's about things not working that's how you learn and how you get guided to the things that are meant for you yep. i did international luxury coaching retreats for years yep. each one i would do clarissa are getting to the stuff my godly girls t-shirt oh gg's in the house um <clears throat> each retreat i would do i was miserable and and i would say well gosh you know the first one let's just say i made five thousand dollars little mm -hmm. small one the next one i maybe made twenty thousand dollars i keep making more money with them and i keep tweaking it because i'm thinking gosh, you know, this, this, these are doing very well, but I'm not enjoying doing them. And I would just keep tweaking it and tweaking it because I'm trying to figure out the right formula for yeah. me to enjoy doing my own retreat. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy doing them. And the last one I did was for Bali right before COVID hit 2019, <clears throat> made about $65,000 on one retreat, beautiful retreat. And once again, I did not like it. No, I was over here. Enjoy? I'm curious if it's a retreat and it's something that is empowering and is going over the things that you have been teaching along the way. What did you not like? What was the what was the what was the turnoff? So, so for me, now this is for me. Mm -hmm. I could teach I could teach people how to do five figure retreats now. Y'all could kill it. Yeah. I need to offer a class. But what happens is 
I am a very spiritually sensitive person. Okay. I don't enjoy being around a lot of different energies mm -hmm. for extended periods of time. Even if you put me in the house next to the house where all of the attendees are going to be, spending too much time engaging with people is very exhausting to me. I can, I can only do doses where I'm pouring into people. Let's just say four or five hours. If you put me for a week yeah. around a lot of different people for an extended, like going and doing a TV show, right? Like I should have known, right? Because I'm just, it's just not my personality. And so fabulous retreats, everyone had really amazing experiences. But for me personally, I also realized I don't want to travel oh. for work. Yeah. I don't want to travel for business like that. If I'm traveling to paradise, I want to be with my boot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be in paradise working yeah. and being on, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be relaxing and, and seeing the sights with my husband or with a best friend. That's just my, my preferred way yeah. to travel not for business. And I think in our minds, you know, you can see other people doing things and it looks so luxurious it looks so fun it looks so um you know whatever it is you see people doing stuff online you're like oh that is so cool you know to get paid to go to you know we were at like an eight million dollar estate yeah. with like three villas guards secured estate it was beautiful in bali you guys gorgeous i i did that thing okay yeah. i did it was amazing but i just didn't enjoy it and i i had to finally accept that it's just, it's it's not in my wheelhouse per se. And maybe if I did it with leaders, right? Maybe if I, I it, it, it was vetted and curated to where I was really just doing it with my leaders, I could do some leadership retreats when the audience is curated, but just random people who want to go on a coaching retreat. Okay. 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 Not my thing. Understood. And, and I, like I said, making all that money, but then not enjoying it. And that sucks. And that's the joy of entrepreneurship. You can say, I don't want to do that anymore and move on from it. I was successful at it. You went out on a high note and that was that because if you went and it was a terrible retreat and everybody gave bad reviews, then you have to do it again. So you could make up for that and then get out of there. They loved it. Yeah. Okay. But I, but that goes back to saying that your ideal income and strategizing your ideal income guys doesn't mean all money is not good money. You right. you can make all these plans just like I did. I wrote down all these different ways to make money, and I went I went through them one by one, just yeah. checking them off. Clarissa, I looked up in two to three years, and I had literally checked off every single one of my income streams that I wanted to create. I had done it, mm -hmm. and it was, I wrote down retreats, published author, paid speaker. This is all this stuff I wrote down. And I and I'm sitting there like, yeah, no, scratch, no, scratch. You know, because you have to also be able to get to know yourself and give yourself that leeway to recognize what's a fit for you. And even with even within your own business that you like doing the job, certain clientele may not be for you. Like you said, maybe curated with very high functioning leaders, maybe only going on a retreat with five women may be a better fit somewhere down the line. I know for our company, there are certain industries we just do not patronize anymore. No matter, I don't care how much money, I do not care how much money they have. Certain industries of in public relations, it, you, you cannot pay me enough money to go at four o'clock in the morning anywhere. You cannot pay me enough so no money rap to first. No, see, I was trying not to say, I was trying to say what? No rappers. Yeah. The music industry has proven that it is just one that even though we are good at what we do, it just doesn't feel amazing. Maybe it's because I'm older now, but even when I was in my 20s, I was like, mm -mm. no, because it's just not my thing. So it's totally okay to be in an industry. And that's how people end up niching themselves out because some people love the nightlife. I have yeah. staff that give me all the parties invitation i want to go to all of them so we will service those clients if i will not be touching them you know I'm, it, it, we may still pay we still may service a company or a, an individual but me personally if, if it's up to me when the company's expanding now other people are helping to make decisions and that's cool but if you don't like doing something 
it's going to hinder you from, again, reaching your financial goals because now you've spent time in an area that's unfulfilling and then your, your focus is off. So, yeah. yeah. One of the tips I'll also give when it comes to strategizing your income, guys, is to do your market research. Yeah. I am a firm believer that I, I'm the type of person, the way my brain works is if I can go into the market and I can find people who are doing something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally, when I say guys, I will dissect a business in a heartbeat. Like I am drilling down, I'm going down the rabbit hole. Like I'm clicking on every link. I'm analyzing every monetized um, product or service. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at what's high ticket, what's not, what's automated, what's virtual, what's in person. I'm literally analyzing someone's entire business model. We don't realize that a lot of these companies, so much is just public knowledge, you guys, yeah. that you can do a case study on your own of looking at how someone is doing what they're doing. And if they're doing something very similar to what you want to do, you can study their business and say, oh, what what is this URL on their website yep. say on this? Oh, they're using, oh, they're using SamCart up here. Oh, what is yep. that software? Because yep. if this is a multi-million dollar business that's are that's very successful doing something similar to what you want to do, guess what? They've already worked out all the yep. kinks. They know the best software. Yep. They know the best systems. They know the best everything. So what you do is you're paying attention to all those details. I have literally built my businesses around inspiration from other people doing, I'll just take pieces and parts and say, oh, I love that part that she's doing. I'm going to start a group membership site. Mm -hmm. like that and I, you know I don't think I'm gonna do it like this I'm gonna tweak it I'm gonna make it my own do it like this and like that but yeah that's a great idea I love that and because if your, your mind anything that I see anybody else doing I will say to myself I can do it mm -hmm. if, if someone else is doing it guys there's no reason you can't do it and as far as price points mm -hmm. one of the best ways for you to strategize your ideal income is to look at your ideal market role model find somebody who's doing exactly where you want to be what you where you want to be on that level study them and then you shoot for the stars too and that cuts down on your path to getting your ideal goal income because half the time it takes us so long to get to where we're trying to get because we're doing the trial and error we're falling off we had a setback if you reverse engineer like you said getting down to the granular details of who built their website how are they operating when i click here does it go to one more page or does it make me go to two more pages oh i see a pattern there's only one click to get to the next thing so you if you if you if you drill down you will find out people have done the research on what is successful and if you got a website that's really intricate and complicated, people think it's so cute. Oh, I have 50 things that I do. Click here for this. Click it. People are overwhelmed. When they come to your website, if they have to do more than one or two clicks to get where they're going, they're out of there. And you'll see all these abandoned carts where people came to the page, didn't buy anything. So pay attention to the people who are doing what you want to do because they, that, that cuts months of research and trial and error out for you. So that's a smart tip. Yeah. Uh, Keish Love said, look at your ideal market model. Sheesh. Okay. Got it. Exactly. Yeah. Go to the source. Go to the people who are already successful doing what you want to do. I'll never forget, um, I was a newer coach in the Atlanta market, um, Jack Daniels, before he was married to Marshawn. Oh, uh, yeah. Jack and I had been on a couple of relationship event panels together. We connected. We had lunch one day. And I think at the time, I might have had like $600 programs. Um, and Jack said to me kind of like, yeah, offhandedly, I charge $10,000 a month and I take two clients a month. And I was like, <laughs> right. Say that. right. What'd you say? Right. Tell like, me more. It was like, yeah, tell me more. Right. And it was like, ding, 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 ding. Like, um, yeah, Rebecca, you really need to raise your prices. And, and it was like one of those moments, guys, like, and when you realize that there is room 
in the market for whatever it is you want to do. Um, every time I've had I've raised my prices, I've been way lagging behind in doing that. Like it's take it, I'm lagging behind versus my market penetration and my brand confidence, the value I'm bringing guys, it's like it's, I'm always underpriced, not overpriced. And I've had to learn to try to keep up with that more because as you keep growing in business, you don't realize that sometimes you can be lagging behind in the market and that your ideal client is ready to pay you two and three times what you're offering it. As a matter of fact, your ideal client will not even think know if they really want to work with you because they'll think you're too cheap. Too cheap. That's yeah. a thing. You just took the snatch the words right out of my mouth. I have been in board meetings where we're vetting vendors for certain things. And if somebody is too cheap, like if the high is 10,000, but you're only charging, you know, 2,000, they are skipping over you. They're not zeroing in like, oh, look at the value. No, they know. They know that a good this or that should cost this amount of money. And if you if you don't price yourself properly, honey, it's, it's a hard lesson. And you learn it 50,000 times before you get the gusto and say, okay, I'm going to charge you 10,000. And then you're mad at yourself because they pay it. They just immediately pay it. Just like that. And, you and you're sitting there like, missing out on I, been, I could have been selling it at this price for the last year. Yes. Yes. So yeah, that, that brings up a good point. Also, Clarissa, is that setting your ideal income goals for your business is also going to take balls. It's going to take some confidence and self-esteem. You may not realize it, that maybe one of the reasons you're not setting real like goals for your money is because you're scared mm -hmm. it, it feel once you write that number down but the reason we're talking about realistic numbers so depending on where you're at in your business guys mm -hmm. it, it's about set if you're if you're making zero dollars in your brand new business right now let the first goal to be make Make $2,000 a month. Yep. That should be the first goal, $2,500. Then the next goal, make it $5,000. The next goal, make it $7,500. The next goal, make it $10,000. It's about scaling up. Mm -hmm. It's not, you're not, real business scales over time. It's, it's not get rich quick schemes, no. right? That's not the way real business works. You, you find what works, you keep tweaking it, getting better at it and duplicating it. Um, but it's going to take self-esteem and confidence because a lot of the time the subconscious uh, psychology of why we don't set goals for our business is that we're scared. And you also have to keep it. Fear is a, is a thing that will keep you out of all these wonderful rooms because you're just too scared to even ask what it takes to get in the room. There is power in proximity. If you are in a room with everybody who's making a million dollars already per month, if you made it into the room, congratulations. Okay, you have you have gotten to the space where the mindset is different, the conversations are different, even the referrals are different. You start to notice you get into different rooms when people are like, "Hey, this is this happens to me all the time." And it's funny because before I started to and, and you were you're always learning how to price yourself. But when I would work with high 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 level people that I hadn't reached that level yet, they'd say, "Hey, Clarissa, um my my friend who's in this industry wanted your number i told him you charge like fifteen thousand a month I, I hope that's right and i'm thinking oh <laughs> oh oh yeah that's what you tell them their mindset is that oh yeah i know how you are i know the quality that you provide it has to cost this amount that's what i kind of told them around about if it's not you know you'll correct me and i'm thinking i'm over here terrified to press the button on something that high but you get into different rooms the conversations change so oh, that's a whole like that's a whole word <laughs> now we talking about money mindset and the energy and spirit of wealth is a real thing um i went to lunch with dr iabo um from here on instagram we went to lunch last week and we we had an amazing lunch together and we're just talking and sharing about her medical practice, our coaching businesses. And she said something and it literally was like, I literally came home that same day and mm -hmm. more than doubled the price on one of my products. Yep. From Because inside of the conversation, see, sometimes you need to hear 
and under you need to be able to breathe the same air and rub elbows with people who are on a wealth mentality to even help you to understand your own worth mm -hmm. and and when she said this to me in this conversation i was like you know you're right why have i kept the price on that so low this i'm not even reaching the people i really want to reach with this low price yeah. nobody's trusting that yeah. when it should be thirty thousand dollars <laughs> you know, and 6,000 or something. It's like, so guys, it's taping, taking leaps of faith and pushing for what you know you're worth. I, I was did some market research earlier this year, Clarissa, and inside my inner circle of my coaches, I made this post and I said, I've been doing some market research and the coaching certification, everything that I teach in this, you know, 12 week program, the only thing I can find that comes close is $30,000. And I just wrote, it like point blank like yeah that i'm not keep this i'm not gonna keep this price this low no. when the closest thing to it that's still not hidden on everything that i teach mm -hmm. is thirty thousand mm -hmm. and minus six and i think that if we're really honest guys i think that our hearts can be in the right place where we want things to be affordable and we we want you know to feel like we're helping people and we're giving back and we're but guess what that you can have lots of other endeavors and products and services to be given back but your bread and butter needs to be making you your money period and that's why you have to be in a room with people who know what things should cost you have to be in spaces where people and this is another thing when you're in certain industries there is sometimes those people with a crab mentality that won't share information. When you're pricing yourself as an entrepreneur, you have no idea where to start. You, you go online and you see, especially, okay, if you're in a, a product-based business, you can say, oh, I see that T-shirts with two colors generally cost $28 plus shipping. You can look at 10 companies and find an average there. But if you're in a service-based business where you don't know what people are charging, now you're like, throwing numbers out there like, ah, did that stick? I yes, saw that I'm talking about, if you ever got off the phone and cried, and I'm not even that much of a crier, but I w worked very long-term with someone, and for years, they were like, this is the budget, this is the budget, and when you're friends with people, and they're working on a huge project, and they need your help, and they say, this is the budget. I'm one of those people who's like, girl, I got you. If, if that's what they, that's the budget, and I know I want you to be successful, okay. Honey, I saw this email, and they paid someone else 10 times. <laughs> not, not double or triple. The year before, I'm doing the same exact thing, helping a friend, a business friend. They paid her 10 times. What my friend stressfully with deep breathing told me her budget was. So I'm not saying that people are dishonest, but I'm saying you need to know what the industry is doing. What's the current industry standard? If you do not know how to price yourself, of course people are gonna take that. If, if they know you already and they know that you do good work and the number is low, there's a difference. If a new customer comes across you and sees it's too cheap, they're running. But if somebody who knows the quality of your work and they've seen you and you give that price, they're like, oh my gosh, you gave me the friend discount. Oh, I'm so grateful. Y'all don't do that. Know what your industry is charging. Even if you're going to give people a slightly discounted rate 10 times, it's absurd. So you Rod, have to know what people are charging. Rod Kelly 23 said, people see expensive as valuable. Point blank, period. Rod, listen, I literally had to sit back and say, yeah, Rebecca, your program could easily be worth $50,000, but what I'm teaching inside of this program, guys, is just no joke. But if it's underpriced, people aren't going to see the value. Period. True. When I literally am revamping and creating a whole new comprehensive program that will be $15,000 this week. Do that, do it with confidence because you've checked the marks. If you are offering a quality service, and you're a quality person who is dependable, who has continuously, repeatedly delivered, it's okay to raise the price because that same person who I saw the email on accident when they came back the next year, honey, I was I was 10 times what I was charging the year before plus another 5,000. 
because it's like I know what you paid somebody else. So not on a vengeance, but it's like, oh, okay, I I, I learned a lesson. I learned right. A lesson. It's like don't 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 keep getting God no. when when the lesson comes and you can see it plain as day. That it's don't get God. Like at the end of the day, what I had to sit there when I like I said when I Yabo and I were sitting there, I was like. We were talking about our different court co coaching programs and, you know, $50,000 program over here, $75,000 program over there. But then we got around to this coaching certification and it was like, and I have coaches coming through that program, making six figures in their first year. If you're coachable and you've got the, the confidence yeah. to do exactly what I tell you to do, my coaches coming through, they're making six figures in their first year. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so I'm teaching you how to get five and ten thousand dollar clients and i'm not even charging ten thousand dollars for the training for the course yeah yeah, yeah. um so gums by does bjj rebecca will that be in an email the new course yes it will be in an email it's, it's launching this week darling this week yep you'll get it oh wait wait, wait. somebody says um the only joy 512 i was in a poor area and didn't make a sale until I reduced my price uh, five percent. First time doing this. That's that's the thing too. That's the thing too. So sometimes you do fall victim, and I use that term loosely. You're not really a victim. You're, if you're learning how to pivot for a market, that's that's you, you're doing what you feel like you need to do based on the consumers in the area. Um, but you have to, to realize, and I don't know if it's a product or a service, but expand. Look, people. Oh, 50%. Not five percent. She said fifty yeah. percent. Woo. Yeah, that's that's, that's and, and that's one of the things that's come up quite a bit in business conversations as well is when you're marketing to the wrong clientele or the wrong audience. You can think that your your price too high if you're not reaching the right people. Um, one of the things that has come up in coaching is I've, I'm always emphasizing YouTube mm -hmm. for my coaches because marketing for any type of a service-based business is YouTube is where you want to market because it's an international audience. Yeah. From the time I got on YouTube, you know, over a decade ago, I began to get international coaching clients. And now you're not dealing with just the U.S. economy and U.S. clients. You're dealing with people all over the world. Yeah. This opens up your audience and your client base to where you don't have to just depend on your city, your your town, your, you know, your state. You can coach people all over the world um, with online coaching. And I think that one of the things that is really key is that keep doing your market research like not just when you start your business mm -hmm. but what are other cutting edge businesses doing in your industry how are they changing how are they adapting to the market what are they bringing to market that's similar to what you could do mm -hmm. right if there's a different product or service that you could offer what could you bring to the market that's different to your offering because we have to keep adapting, right? Nothing just stays the same, guys. Everything, we, we have to keep adjusting. And you should fight really hard for a global imprint for your company. Like you just, you pointed out, YouTube opens you up to everybody. It's really smart to place yourself where everybody in the world can see you. Because there are some things, it's funny enough, I live in Atlanta, and people from smaller markets that are coming out with books or products, they see Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta, people watch that show and they automatically just have a connection to, oh, you must be around all these people all the time. So for me, I'm around celebrities all the time. It, it doesn't move me one way or the other, but to people who don't have access to or that see that type of stuff, there's a draw for a smaller market for someone like myself to come in and kind of teach you what I know that puts, puts you in these positions. I was raised in a small town. I was not raised in a big place. I got, I, I positioned myself. I dropped myself here in Atlanta at 20 something years old, scared, and I made it happen. So now I know the formula for small town to big town, little fish to big fish. Like I know the way for myself. One day I realized I'm not just an Atlanta PR person. I don't, my firm is not just an Atlanta firm. We're producing events in LA. We're going to New York regularly. We're always in Miami. Hmm, grow. And I got my first international client in Sierra Leone and I was like, oh, we're here. We're here. This we're doing that. Yeah, so fight really hard to find a way 
for your business to cross over into areas that are not your backyard and the people at church. There are other people in this world that will, there's 7 billion people, yeah. roughly. And you, 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 can, you can expand your, your consumer market. Most definitely. Um, one of the things that I began to realize is that once you start crossing over different ethnicities, international, yeah. you know, global guys, there, you know, there's just so much room, you know, at the table. We we mm -hmm. are in a global market, yeah. um, and there's no reason that you shouldn't have your piece of the pie, right? right? Especially when you start thinking bigger and believing bigger for your business, and start strategically setting goals for your business versus just kind of settling with whatever you're getting, right? Um, like I say, there is just some miraculous effect that writing down stuff has in your life for setting up goals. And the more that you strategically create these goals, right, you will be getting, like I said, I, three years before all those goals manifested, I had written, written each one of them down. And I looked up one year later, like three of the seven were done one year later. And, it, and so, guys, it's like this stuff just just starts, you know, building momentum, building momentum. The year before I wrote down published book, retreat and paid speaker. And the next year, I had my first book out. One week after the book came out, I landed at Megafest with Bishop Jakes. Oh, he tweets me from Megafest. I land literally with these high ticket clients from him tweeting me. Everything went to the next level and did my first retreat that same year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Domino effect. And you have to be prepared, guys, for the things that you're trying to set up because to get, to level your business up to 10 exit or five exit, it's going to take the effort is different, but the time and obligation of yourself is different. You do not get to sleep 10 hours if you're trying to get to a million dollars a month. You just do and, and this argument with people all the time. There's a there's philosophies on all of it. Some people think sleep is for suckers, some people think that rest is the way. Look, figure out what works for you, but just know if you are trying to 10x or, or elevate in any way, you're gonna miss a little bit of sleep. You're going to get your feelings hurt a little bit, but it is worth it because once you get yourself into that new bracket, you get to relax a little bit or you get to hire more people. You get to the fruits of the labor show up yeah. and yeah. money more problems. Yes, but I'd rather have money problems than, than no money problems. But, Clarissa, I'm so glad you're, you're wrapping us up with that topic because one of the things I wanted to remember to make a point about is to really sit down guys when you strategically write down your income goals do not pull these random numbers no. from the sky out of the out of your butt oh i want to make 10 million dollars a month <laughs> right <laughs> oh i want to make a hundred million dollars a year i want to be a billionaire yeah. <laughs> okay but you haven't made your first thousand dollars a month honey like i and, and and I'm just going to give you, you guys, I've gotten some great insight um, about business and money. For me personally, this is coming from someone who's made made money, okay? Just realistically, I've made money. Yeah. And I learned that for me personally, there's not a whole lot more I need than about a high end on 50000 a month. Mm -hmm. Low end, like mm -hmm. thirty, mm -hmm. thirty mm -hmm. to fifty thousand dollars a month. Anything past forty thousand dollars a month, I'm like, it really doesn't even matter. Like mm -hmm. it, you think so? If I do the math right now, guys, on what forty thousand dollars a month is, because we people just love to throw these numbers yeah. out all the time. I'm going to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. I want to be. And and if you do the math, $40,000 a month times 12 is only $480,000 a year. Okay. Four, that's not a millionaire. No. Now you can invest it and be a millionaire. Your worth can be a millionaire investing it over time. But the point I want to make is that when everyone's putting all this pressure on social media to be a millionaire, right? <laughs> a million dollars a year is $83,333, $83,333 a month.
Mm -hmm. Yep. Almost $85,000 a month. And you're so pressed and taking on all this pressure to be a billionaire. Okay, why? Yeah. What do you need $85,000 a month for? Yeah. That's my first question. Before, before you start killing yourself yeah. to try to make eighty five dollars to $100,000 a month to be a millionaire, what do you need it for? Let, I mean, I'm speaking, I'll just speak for myself. Mm -hmm. Speak for myself. I don't have a whole lot I want to do. That's going to cost me more than thirty to fifty thousand dollars a month. This is just what I've learned. Mm -hmm. And you can go try to kill yourself getting to this next level, guys, with all the headaches. And now you're a CEO with fifty employees, and you got to manage the headaches of running this big business because you now are making ten million dollars a year, but you're netting the same amount I'm making. Yeah. Right. You're netting thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars a month in your salary from running the ten million dollar business. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm what I'm making the point is to say, write out your dream life. This is this is how I got to these numbers for myself, making yeah. more and more money. Then writing out and looking at how much do I really want to shop? Mm -hmm. How much do I want to travel? Mm -hmm. If I have my dream car, my dream house my dream wardrobe, I'm married, I'm successful, I'm happy, and I've got a personal chef, I've got a housekeeper. What does all this cost me like in my dream life? And I promise you, you're going to land at less than $40,000 a month mm -hmm. for what all of that costs you all of your per month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So make realistic goals. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't Guys, don't don't create these fake social media goals that are just not even real. Statistics tell us how many real millionaires there are yeah. and billionaires. And, and it's not all these people on the internet and because there's not, the person. And it's not always liquid capital. That's a lot of things people confuse too. People may be worth a million dollars, but that does not mean they have a million dollars in their pocket. That means their business is worth 600000 their speaking engagements are typically bringing in 200000 They have assets in the amount of their house. Their house costs 500000 Yes. Yeah. Right? This all goes into worth, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it, it's, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. So don't let the pressure that social media puts on business owners to look a certain way. Um, I grew up around more blue collar millionaires, Clarissa. I grew up in the construction industry. So I grew up around my uncles who were self-made millionaires in construction and real estate. Mm -hmm. I grew up around white men who own lumber yards and building materials yeah. who were self-made or inherited from their father, their grandfather, these lumber yards, big lumber and building materials mm -hmm. businesses, uh, sawmills, lumber mills, this type of stuff. And I never saw anybody with a designer bag oh, you won't you won't their wives didn't have designer stuff um the most that my uncles had that would speak to their money is you know ni a nice home a mercedes a car um you know my one uncle had a plane and which it was a you know a pilot he would fly his family mm -hmm. from their ohio home down to their florida home mm -hmm. and that that was hinting at the kind of money he had <laughs> right but you know, for us, for especially us growing up right now, that's, that was doing the most yeah. like back then. Um, but but yeah, guys, it's, you know, your average person who really has wealth is not all this flashy, flashy, My flashy. Wealthiest friend, you would never, he is so inconspicuous. It's like, if you, you would never pick him out of the room to say he's the one with the money. Never. And I'm just laughing like, most people are tap dancing to get a bag. They tap dancing to get something with a signature on it so people know this is the brand. He has on very high quality clothing and shoes, but none of it's flashy. And it's like, huh, there's a formula here. So what real wealth looks like is different than what social media wealth looks like. So again, don't be, don't let the smoke and mirrors yeah. let you believe what wealth has to look like. I'm watching Yellowstone, y'all. And that show has had me hooked 
because these are people in Montana and they are land rich, okay? There's a different type of rich and wealth when you are in land and other stuff. So yes. this is a great way for us to kind of start talking about mindset and money and all that stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation because I'm Yeah, love- really great conversation. Mm-hmm. Just make sure you guys start small, start building and yeah. scaling up. Set your goals to say your first 2,500, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and just keep growing and then be honest with yourself about what is really real for you and what makes you happy. Yes. I know what those numbers look like for me. <laughs> and I, I like the balance yeah. of I want to make 50000 to to $100,000 a month and only work 15 hours a week. Yes. That's, what, that's me. Like. It's just, like that's me all day guys I mean, yeah. I mean i'm serious i'm a grandma now i don't want to work full time i want to make my money make my money work for me yeah. and invest it and and grow my wealth from investing it and but i'm chillaxing <laughs> I love that's it. how i want to do I it. Love it like for real yes well everybody... all right any last last thoughts clarissa yes just go on over to my page find out a little bit more about public relations if you have a business or a service that you're looking to start and or push out to a different audience check me out over there we have a number of different courses and we are just we're really in a space in time right now where we're loving the results of our customers from our courses so join us in that don't forget to join our newsletter here it's in the link for my bio and rebecca's bio for ceo sister society so join us join us join us stay informed yay and um, our my last offer for ALPCC at the old price, class starts next week, and I have not promoted it because it's changing and the new price and new class is coming. So I haven't even been promoting it. But if you're in there and you're on here right now and you want to snag one of those spots that starts next, next week for my coaching certification before that price triples, yeah. um, go ahead and grab that. The link is in my bio um, if you're wanting to become a certified abundant life coach before that, that program changes into my new leadership program. Um, and also, if you're wanting us to take over your marketing, you want to do a millionaire coach photo shoot and branding package, there is a link for that in my bio as well. Thank you so much for everyone. Your questions, your input has been so wonderful tonight. We appreciate you all so much. Like I said, email us at hello at ceosistersociety.com with any of your questions. We love you guys, and we will see you next week. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye, Clarissa. Bye, honey. <laughs>